Hey guys, and welcome to part two in our Monty Python Black Knight helmet series. So in part one, we did 3D modeling. In this video, we're gonna do the full UV mapping process. Okay, here we go. This video has been made possible by soloanimation.com. All right, everybody, well, we're in my 2018, as you can see, and in front of me is um, the model that we created in video number one. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to UV this guy, all right? Now, what I wanna do is uh, take you guys through my process, uh, how I approach something like this. It's not necessarily the process, but it's my process. And uh, I've been using this uh, process for a while. It works for me. So that said, let's get uh, started. Now, uh, the first thing that I do is to check my model to make sure that there are no faces in places where I don't need them. So basically areas where um, I have geometry that's not gonna be visible. So what I did, for example, is I took this cross on top, I lifted it up and I deleted all the faces on the bottom because I'm not gonna see that anyway, right? And then I went in and I did the same thing for the uh, rivets here on the nose guard. They, these are quite high poly as is. So I thought I would take those out as well, right? So that's the first thing they do. And then what I started doing is to group things uh, in a logical manner. Now, um, the main part of the helmet is of course the helmet itself. So I group that right there. Then I have a group for that cross on the top and I have a group for the rivets or bolts or whatever you wanna call them, right? The reason why I group them this way is first of all, so I have a good distinction of what's what and where they are, but it also helps me a lot in my UV process and I'll show you in a minute why, okay? Now, before we get into that, um, we need to have a clean topology, of course, and we need to make sure that we don't have any issues. So we have a clean mesh. Now. What I found is this cross on top here uh, was in fact not clean. In the last video, I used uh, Boolean and Union. Uh, I personally find Boolean somewhat unreliable. And what it did is it created non-manifold uh, geometry and I don't want that. So what I did is I went back in and I basically cut off the four arms of this cross and I placed a new cube or score in the middle without a bottom. That's the guy on the right right here, okay? So after that it has been cleaned up and everything has been grouped into order and uh, there were no further issues, I started to UV. So uh, what I did is I started with the helmet. So I just selected that here. I went up to uh, UV and then uh, automatic projection. I'm not gonna do that right now because it will mess up my UV. But when you do that, you basically get, um, you know, a, a random bunch of shells that are nothing near what they should be, okay? So what I then do is I right click and go to UV shell and I drag select everything that's present in that window, the zero to one space window, right? And when that's done, I'll right click, go to cut and sew and move and sew. Now, when I do that, everything gets stitched together and it becomes one big blob or one big mess basically. But that's fine. The reason why I'm doing that is to make sure that everything is connected and from there I start to cut. So I look at my model and I kind of decide where I want to cut things so it makes sense. So uh, for me to get this circle on top, what I did is I selected this uh, edge right here, the one, the white one right there, and I cut it there so that gave me this shell right here, okay? Then I decided to do another cut at the bottom right there and another cut right there. Now, because I cut it in the back as well on that vertical line, I therefore now have this guy right here and I have this two part section. So this one and I'll just go to UV shell, that one and that one, All right? So that's the top, that's one part, second part, that's the ring below and then that's my main body. Now, when I make all those cuts, I basically have a still a blob with a bunch of cuts in it, and I want to clean that up, right? So what I do next is I right click on a UV shell. I once again drag click everything, but now it has cuts in it. And I right click again, go to modify, and go to unfold. And then I select everything again, and then I go to modify, and then I go to layout. 
Now the first one basically flattens everything. The second um, uh, command layout uh, kind of places it in the zero to one space with proper spacing. Okay, so it's not overlapping or whatnot. Now, once I've done that for the helmet, I will do that for the cross on top as well, of course, and I'll do that for the rivets too. Now, the rivets is kind of a pain in the butt because there are quite a few. So basically what I do there is I right click, go to UV shell, drag select everything that's available. Okay. And then I right click again and I go to cut and sew and move and sew. So everything that will uh, can be stitched together will be stitched together. And then I'll repeat the steps, selecting everything, unfold everything, select everything again, and select layout. Now, even when all that is done, that doesn't mean that we're done yet, because what that will give us is basically all of the parts that you see here, but they're in random order and they're not in proper scale. So for example, this circle right here could be tiny, where one of the little uh, bolts here could be huge. Now, we don't want that. It all should be in proportion. So what I do is I, for example, take all the rivets, I right click, go to UV shell, drag select that, and just hit W and move it out of my scene. I'll do the same for the cross on top of the helmet. So I got only the helmet pieces in the middle. Now I'll start to paste them around and move them around until I'm happy. And then what I'll do is I'll bring in the rivets, move them into place, and I'll bring in the other parts as well. Now after that is all said and done, you will get something like this, okay? Now, this is basically my uh, completed uh, layout from my UV, and uh, you know I have deleted the history, uh, frozen transformations, and uh, centered pivot. So I am uh, basically ready to go. Now, what I want to do here is I want to take uh, the copy of this model into ZBrush and uh, increase the uh, poly counts on this uh, quite a bit so we can use it to add little details so we can uh, bake that later on the Substance Painter. And of course, the low poly model is going to go straight into Substance Painter, and I'm not going to change anything on that because it's uh, okay the way it is, right? So uh, just to recap, uh, first check to make sure you don't have any faces that you don't need. Get rid of any geometry that you don't want, okay? That's step number one. Two is to name everything properly and group everything properly. Three is to do a projection and make sure you have all the components laid out properly. So uh, sew where you need to sew and cut where you need to cut. And then you need to place everything in the zero to one space in a scale and in an order that makes sense. So tiny parts should be tiny, large parts should be large, okay? Now that's uh, basically it. One more thing, um, if you are creating this model and you have a poly count restriction, for example, because you're uh, using it for a game or whatnot, um, what you can do is by going through each group, look at what the poly count will be. So I got the poly count open here. You can see that the helmet itself is 663. We have the cross, it's a 57. And then the rivets is quite high. Now, um, the rivets count is high because of these guys in the front. If you need to have a lower poly count, what you could do, for example, is delete those and use uh, stencils or stamps in Substance Painter to create the same effect, okay? So that's uh, basically it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, move into the next video next time where we're gonna start to texture this guy. And we're gonna do uh, ZBrush first and then Substance Painter, okay? Well, thank you for watching video number two and see you guys in video number three.